back to the reflecting of white and yellow or copper. And that's when the body is completely illuminated with light. And this was how the ions appeared fully materialized as light beings in a terrestrial form. And through their generations, the light degenerated and became as we see today. And in verse 5 it states, Now, because the drunks or Canaanites had not previously obeyed the Lord, but went and dwelt with the Adamites, there was a half-breed race born on the earth called Yak, signifying ground people. And they buried in the ground like beasts of the forest. And the Yaks did not walk wholly upright, but also went on all fours. So here it states that the Canaanites interbred with the Adamites, and a new race was found upon the earth called Yaks, meaning ground people. They did not walk upright, and some of them went on all fours. And this is also where you get your Sasquatch and Bigfoot from, this particular race, the Yaks. And in verse 6 it states, God said, Because the Yaks cannot be taught the crime of incest, behold, they shall not dwell forever on the earth. So also shall it be with the Canaanites, except therein they co-inhabit with the Abelites or Ions, whose seed is born unto everlasting life. But with the Canaanites and their hairs that spring from the Yaks, there shall be an end, both in this world and the next. So here God explains how the Yaks are unable to be taught and shall not dwell upon the earth forever. So there's an extinction time for this particular race. And it states it will be the same with the Canaanites unless they interbreed with the Ions or Abelites who are the chosen race of God because their seed is born unto everlasting life. And in verse 7 through 9 it states, And the arms of the Yaks were long, and their backs were stooped and curved. And the Lord said, Because they are of the fruit of incest, and not capable of speech, nor of eternal life in heaven, the Ions, or Abelites, shall make servants of them. So here it describes how the Yaks had long arms, with their backs stooped and curved, and they were made as servants to the Ions. And in verse 8 it states, And that they may not tempt my chosen to bring forth fruit unto destruction, they shall be neutralized in my sight. And the angels of God taught the irons to make unches of the yaks, or eunches of the yaks. And the males and females made the irons eunches of the yaks and took them for servants. In verse 9, And the Lord said, The yak shall serve the irons and build and sow and reap for them. And it was so. So here it shows the yaks are made as service to the irons for building, reaping, and sowing. And in the first book of the first Lord, chapter 3, verse 24 and 25, it states, And there began to be a new tribe on the earth, and they were called Ahuens, because they were half-breeds between the Canaanites and the, and the irons, or Abelites. And the Ihuans were red like copper, and they were taller and stronger than any other people in the world. And the Lord commanded the Ihuans, saying, verse 25, Protect ye the Ions, or Abelites, the little people, white and yellow. Call them the sacred people, for ye are of them, and ye are also of the Lord your God. And it was so. So here it states another new race called the Ihuans. And they are a crossbreed between the Canaanites and the Abelites. And they were copper in skin tone, stronger than all of the other races. And they were commanded by the Lord to protect the Ions, their ancestors, and to call them the sacred people. 
And he stated, For ye are of them, meaning their offspring, and ye are also of the Lord your God, meaning that they are offsprings of the angels. And this was the last race born before man will evolve into more shapely forms of modern man, which will be the crossbreeds of the different races, mainly through the Ayans and the Ahuans, the copper-skinned people. And in the first book of the first lords, chapter 4, verse 8, it states, In those days, the relative proportion of the races of men were, the Ayans, or Abelites, were 100. 100 people. The Ahuans, the copper-skinned people, were 300. The drunks, or the Canaanites, the brown and black, were 5,000 people. The Yaks, or Sasquatch, or Bigfoot, was 5,000. And of the monstrous sites, between man and beast, there were 3,000. But the later died each generation, for they had not the power of procreation amongst them. So Harris states, in those days, meaning when man began to multiply around 70,000 years B.K., there were 100 Ayans, or Abelites, 300 Ahuans, 5,000 Canaanites, and 5,000 Yaks, or Bigfoots. And the Monstracites, which is crossbreeds between animal and man, and there were of them 3,000. And these were the races upon the earth when man began to multiply on the earth, around 70,000 years B.K. So knowing this, the legends of old, where they showed man being half man and half animal, is an actual true event. With this being said, now using the timetables of prophecy, applying the arc cycles of 3,000 years, this was the first arc cycle after the creation of man, called the Ark of Wayne. And the archangels, who was in charge of the first arc cycle was the Etherian god Sententes. So from 72,000 BK to 69,000 BK, which is one arc cycle of 3,000 years, is when these events took place, when man began to multiply on the earth. And BK, meaning before Cosmon, and the birth of Cosmon was in the year 1848 AD present time when the earth ended the arc of Cosmon, which we are in today, a new arc cycle of 3,000 years. So from the arc of Cosmon going back to the arc of Wayne, it's 24 arc cycles of 3,000 years, which is 72,000 years. And this is how the timelines are rendered up based off the arc cycles within the timetables of prophecy. And these were the races of males and females before the flood of waters, where these races became mostly extinct, except those who were spared because of the flood. And now we find remains of these early races of men, and from when man began to multiply on the earth to the flood, it's 16 arc cycles of 3,000 years, which is 48,000 years that these particular races spread upon the earth before the flood. And I explain these arc cycles in the documentary called The Arc Cycles. So you can check that documentary to understand the arc cycles more. And with that, i like to say peace and blessings and catch you on the next documentary called The Submerged Continent of Pan, The Missing Link to the Human History. Shalom. Shalom.